Today, I install the old Mac EM7 engine into the Mac Anthem, and as a special bonus, I use a 6 speed transmission. Because if you're going to go Mac, you're going to go Mac. Okay, let's get this show on the road. And yes, first off, um, this thing seems a little like it's going to stall when you move off in the first gear. And it does that without any cargo behind it. There's a reason for that. It's a lack of low down torque and slightly too tall gearing. And I'm driving a six speed manual. So I am most definitely going to try and move off in second gear, or maybe even third. And we may hear that sort of laboring sound quite a bit. Hopefully I'll do okay. I've had a bit of practice, but I still get this wrong quite a bit. So this is my short wheelbase 6x2 day cab Mac Anthem. And it's equipped with a EM7 engine with 275 horsepower and 1,305 foot-pounds of torque. So that is not a powerful engine, but the has a good amount of torque relative to the power output. This particular EM7 is a Maxi Dyne variant. Maxi Dyne, um, interesting name to describe the engine. It's the high torque rise model. So peak torque is produced at 1,020 RPM. Yes, it's very specific. And the show's over by 1800 revs, it might even be 1750. What does that mean? Quite a broad range of torque, not as much as uh, if their engine went out to 2100 RPM. But it's usable, usable with a set of wide ratios like this 6 speed. Well, so far so good. I have to change up somewhere between 16 and 1700 revs, so I have got to use pretty much every single rev that's available to me and even then there are some points where it's lacking a little bit and we're bound to come across those uh, later on in this drive but for the most part you don't need an 18 speed with this engine in fact you probably will find that very tedious block shifting three gears at a time that does not sound like fun But for the owner operator who doesn't like shifting gears all that much, doesn't want an automatic, or the fleet operator trying to attract drivers to drive the trucks, but doesn't want them to have to go through learning a, a 7, 10, 12, 13 speed or 18 speed. Yep, the, uh, the engine drivetrain powertrain combination makes a lot of sense. And Maxi Dime doesn't really exist in today's Mac engines in quite the same way. But it kind of works with this Mac Anthem. I'm going to bob along at 55. I'm in no particular hurry today. And the engine's kind of noisy. I'll probably push the speed up a little bit later. But it's content cruising at 1200 revs in 6 gear at 55. Um, yes, everything else is passing me, but we're in Texas. And so the 70 mile an hour speed limit, or 65, or whatever the speed limit is, seems to be considered more of an optional limit as opposed to a real limit. Kind of like the pirate's code, you know, more of an advisory thing than, than the law. This particular six-speed uh, transmission, I think it's the Maxi Torque it's called, has a custom final drive. It's 3.35. Um, that is a little too tall for moving off from rest with a cargo. But the car, that's a compromise. But the other side is you can do 70 miles an hour at 1500 revs, and um, it's not guzzling that much fuel. And Max uh, EM7 or E7 engine, it's a 12 liter, it's 11.9 depending where I look. Uh, inline 6 um, was manufactured from the late 80s, I think it was 88 when it was introduced. 
and it was available as mechanical and then as a common rail um, electric or electrical uh, engine. Has a fantastic reputation. Uh, I hear stories of the, um, the E7 three, 350 horsepower being able to outpull uh, equivalent Cummins. Depending where you look, some people say, well, they're not designed for speed, they're designed for, for hauling and hill climbing, and that's all down to the gearing. Well, that may be so. I'm not sure what's to stop you from putting short enough gearing onto a, a Cummins um, big cab. But uh, this engine has a lot of torque versus its power, and it is tuned that way. The Econodyne equivalent is still fairly high torque for the power, and that's compared to the, the Cummins and even some of the Casper engines. This engine today is voiced by uh, Zmods. This is the, the sound from his Macar pack, so it's not entirely accurate to the engine, but it's most definitely a Mac sound. Very characteristic sound, uh, certainly from outside. But yeah, this uh, truck is perfectly happy, bumbling along at 55. And we've been through some gradients, about to go up a slight gradient. It should be able to hold this speed. Not the heaviest cargo in the world by a long stretch. It's only 22 and a half thousand pounds. So um, it will not perform quite the same with uh, 40,000 pounds hitched up to the back. But I wanted this to be a bit more interesting than me watching, or you watching, the, the truck struggle, oh, roadworks, construction work, than you watching the truck uh, struggle to get up to 50. Right. Then exit right. Interesting, though, because this road on the map, I mean, it, it ends. Um, so this is leaving the game open to when they release an update to reopening this, this road. Exit is this right. guy going to go? No. So here we are, straight away, um, I had to change down a bunch of gears and I got to work the engine all the way close to the governor, every single gear on the way up. I guess that's not that much different to if I was block shifting in a 12 or an 18 speed. Anyway, leave the highway, got to turn left at the bottom here, so we'll do a complete stop and um, it's going to sound like it's stalling, I'm, I'm sure of it. Stop in the beginning here. Probably going to have pretty poor visibility left and right. Um, <laughs> yes, the anthem has anyway. There we go. There's that. Uh, I'm almost stalling feeling. Uh, oh, nothing coming on the left. That's good on the right. Okay, let's get it moving. And um, hmm. oh, oops. Okay, so that's me moving off in second gear. And um, it, it did it. This time we'll use first. Uh -huh, yeah. Can't really see that well to the left, but uh, we'll inch it forward. He's going to stop. Yeah. So much easier to move off in first gear, as you'd expect. I mean, second's a bit tall for having cargo behind you, but it didn't cut out on me and it didn't stall. So I'm happy enough with that. Max numbers give it a, a 700 foot pound um, clutch engagement torque figure. The, I've modelled this to give it slightly more. I think it's 725 or 730. So it's slightly more. Um, and a little bit lower in the rev range. And that's really so the, the truck is drivable. With the scale of American Truck Simulator being such that what it is, a hill in real life maybe goes up by 100 feet course you're condensing that so much more in terms of horizontal distance so the gradient becomes considerably steeper so I give me give me some leeway on those engine torque cuts guys need a bit more torque low down to even get the thing moving off without stalling nobody wants to be constantly stalling yeah it's not fun right up at the top So, short little trip, hey, this, this is one of my trucks on the right, short little trip today, I didn't really want this to be a long drive, I, um, I'm experimenting with this, this truck, this engine, this transmission, and I like it, so I may well be putting this into an engine pack, 
We'll see. Oh yay, it's one of these confusing give way to a slip road. Uh, oh, wow. Well, I guess it's clear. Okay. I come across these in real life in Texas. They are just as confusing in real life as they are in the game. Stay where you are, black car. Huh? Or brown or purple. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm not that far from my destination right now, which is uh, great news. Oh, um, okay. There's a Mac later on the left. In fact, I'm pretty much here. Great. Now, had I have crashed, which I so rarely do, I could have stopped into the dealership on the left. Now, there's the Steeler. Interesting uh, engine brake or jake brake on this thing. It It's very effective. Uh, I've set it to, um, to kind of default 2.0 um, setting for engine brake. Three stage. Anyway. Right. I might do some difficult reversing here. Let's take a look. Ah, that looks easy. Here we'll go with that. Alright. I mean, how hard can it be, right? We didn't make that look easy, but I'm almost certainly going to skip through that. All right, we arrived at our destination. I'm going to leave it idling and disconnect the trailer, and let's see how well we did. Okay, 124 miles, just under 19 gallons, so that's about six and a half, six and a half to seven, seven miles per gallon. I'm happy enough with that. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. It's a little short, it's a little different, and um, it was a lot of fun to do. So if you have, you know what to do. And uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.